Raw Dinosaur Adventure and welcome back to our little exploration into fossils, paleontology, dinosaurs and everything else. Um, hey, I have a Allosaurus skull here. Because you see, this little episode, we're talking about what it means to be a paleontologist. What does a paleontologist spend most of his time doing and what do you need to do if you want to become a paleontologist? You see, this is an Allosaurus fragile skull and it's in stunning condition. It's got all of the bones together, it's got all of the teeth. But do you think that this was discovered like this? No, not quite. This would have come in hundreds of thousands of tiny little pieces that needed to be dug up, collected, preserved and glued back together. You see, as fun as it is to go and dig up these fossils, a huge part of a paleontologist's work is the lab work. The gluing and the fixing and the conservation of the fossils into a beautiful stunning skull like this. So join me as we do some real experiments, we actually begin to glue some dinosaurs back together for real life, and let's go and explore what it actually takes to be a paleontologist. As stunning as this Allosaurus fragilis skull is, there's no way it would have been found like this. You see, these dinosaur fossils are what we call permineralized. Now what that means is that when this dinosaur roamed the earth, it died and it got buried very quickly, probably in a big flooding event. And as it was buried, the minerals in the sediment around it went into the bone, permeated it, infilled it, encased it, and permineralized it. It petrified it. Ah, that preserved the bone. You see, the dinosaur bone is still there in the fossil. It's just been encased and infilled with minerals. But what that means is, well, when it begins to go in and when it begins to become permineralized, as the minerals settle and set, they can sometimes crack the bone up. And then as it begins to erode and the wind and the rain begins to wash out the cliffs, these dinosaur bones can begin to crack. They're very fragile. So when you actually start digging up these bones, they can come in hundreds of little pieces. And you need to collect them up, photograph them very carefully, begin to glue them back together again. But you don't always find it like that. Come down here and have a look at this fossil that we've got. Now this is a skull from, well it's a kind of dinosaur, this is a Mosasaurus. Ah, can you see close up? You can see the bottom bit of the jaw, you can see the teeth, but hey, some of them are broken. Some of the teeth aren't even the right way around, that one's not even in the jaw. Now Mosasaurus was one of those big swimming marine reptiles, and this is from the Kemkem in North Africa. Ah, uh, okay. You see, this is a hard limestone. You can just see how hard that is. So when you dig this up, you get your hammer and you begin to chip around carefully. You begin to dig it out of the rock and you end up with a skull. You see, this is exactly how it came out of the rock. All it's had is a little bit of cleaning on the surface, but if you wanted to turn this into that skull like our Allosaurus fragilis, you would need to bit by bit pick all of these bones out and very carefully and very slowly begin to glue them back together. In fact, because the rock is so hard, it's actually better just to leave it like this. But if you go to some other places, like down on the Isle of Wight, the dinosaur bones there are preserved in a soft clay. So rather than getting your picks and your shovels out, you very carefully prise the dinosaur bone out of the side of the cliffs. And then you can begin to wash and clean it and glue it back together into your complete dinosaur. Ah, that's a really useful way of being able to get your complete dinosaurs. Now earlier this year, before the lockdown came on in the UK, I was in America and I was doing some work in a museum and we went collecting some fossils. Some really cool fossils from Texas in the Triassic red beds. And if you come down here, you can see some of the work we've started doing. We've got everything set out on the table and it's got some really rather wonderful fossils that we're going to begin to glue and fix back together. Now this is a skull of a Phytosaurus. It's the real deal. It was excavated by me. We started gluing it back together and you can see all of the hundreds of little pieces that we've already started to do. But you know what? If you come and have a look over here at all these little bags and bits, you see how many 
of these different little bits and bobs we actually have. So many of them, so many bits needing gluing back together. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you a little taster of the actual world of a paleontologist. You see, what I'm going to do, I didn't quite get to finish this before the coronavirus pandemic hit and I had to stick it all in my rucksack and run back to the UK. But we're here, we're set up and we're going to start doing some work on it. So in the next little time lapse sequence, you're going to see exactly how long it takes to actually work out all these little bits as we start to glue these back together again. Okay, so if you have a look, we've got our little bags here. Now, each place that we started excavating was in a slightly different location, and you could work out on the site that it was for slightly different things. So you write down all the information in there, you write down all of the details, which tell you a little bit about the bones, what you think the bones are, and what part it's from. Hey, look, that's part of a tooth. Wow, that's a pretty big tooth, but the tip is missing. It's going to be in here somewhere. We have to glue it all back together again. We've got little bits of the jawbone here, which are all in pieces. We've got little bits of the breastplate, all the little stuff, which we've all labelled on site. Now, once that's labelled on site and bagged up, we can bring it back and begin gluing it together. Now, if you have a look at this, can you tell what part of it is? Hey, that's the front of the snout. Um, in fact, these two pieces join together. You can see all the bits of glue that we've started to fill in. You see, we have lots of special glue. This is one type of glue that we use. It's called a penetrant stabilizer. That makes sure the bone is strong enough to actually begin to glue it all back together. Then we have lots of different types of glues of various viscosity. That means how runny it is. A really, really runny glue is for lots of little tiny pieces. A slightly thicker glue is for the larger pieces. And finally, we have this. It's a big gel glue, which helps to glue the really big pieces back together again. Once you've begun to glue it, you've got to use a little... It's, it's like a puzzle. You've got to work out which piece goes where and slowly begin to fit it together. So let's have a dive in. Let's see if we can work out and get a bit of a skull back together again here. We've just spent over half an hour working on this snout. You can see there's the front of the snout. It moves along to the back and the eyes would be up here somewhere. This is the bottom part of the jaw that we started gluing together. You can see the little ridges here where all the teeth would go in as well. Now we spent over half an hour, it was nearly 40 minutes working on this. And all we really did is glue a few bits on, work out where to it goes, fix the two big bits together and actually begin to organise some of the smaller little bits. You see, in order to get these two halves to the state that they were in, that took about eight hours. Ah, you see, this is a huge amount of work. You've got to go through everything piece by piece and glue it all together. When you go to your cliffs or when you go to your dinosaur site and you start digging up your dinosaurs, they don't come out with a whole T-Rex just standing there like that. No, they come out in many, many, many tiny little bits. Sometimes, if you're really lucky, you can find a whole skeleton, but it's in a huge piece surrounded by rocks. So you either have to take the whole lot away with you, including all the rocks, which takes huge, great big helicopters and diggers and all sorts of stuff, but more likely than not, they're in so many bits and pieces already, you've got to collect them bit by bit. And then you have to bring them back here and slowly and meticulously begin to piece them together. So eventually, where this is going to be a complete skull, or at least a partially complete skull, you can see you've got a good chunk of it as well. And then I'll tell you one other little secret. You see, dinosaur fossils and all other fossils in fact are considered complete if they're only 75% all there. So in other words you only have to have 75% of the skeleton in order for it to be classified as complete. Ah this may well end up being a very close to complete skull. There's one other little piece that we do. If you come down here you can see some of this white stuff. Uh, okay, that's not actually part of the skull, but we had to put that there in order to make these two parts fixed together. 
This is a special kind of putty and you get it in two halves, you mould it together and you begin to press it into the gap. So if we don't find enough bits to fill up this, that may well be filled in with putty and then once it's hardened and dried, you get your paintbrush and you paint over it to make it look like the original. So the vast majority is there, but then it looks like a complete skull. Wonderful stuff and a really technical and detailed thing that you have to try and slowly piece together bit by bit. So there you go, that gives you a little taster into some of the work that a paleontologist has to do. In fact, this is what you spend most of your time doing. Because a paleontologist isn't just out there with his hat and his tools, although that is a very big and important part of it, you have to be back and carefully and meticulously gluing it all together. Because you see, a paleontologist is not just about digging up stuff for fun. A paleontologist is trying to advance science. He's trying to find out more about the world that used to be. A world that is different from the world we have today. And that's when you delve into the past and you begin to work out what's there. And dinosaurs are a big part of that. So you begin to slowly glue and meticulously fix this, reconstruct it, and then you have to document it, you have to photograph it, you have to begin to craft it and paint it and get it into hey, we're going to try and reproduce what a dinosaur looked like. Now, there's a huge amount of guesswork there, but the reality is you can tell a lot from the skeleton, from where the muscles and the ligaments join, and, yes, yeah, sometimes you even find fossilised skin. Wow, how absolutely fantastic. So, you want to become a paleontologist, what do you need to do? Well, the first thing is, you get out there and you start digging. You need to continue to build your passion. And there are many places all over the country that, once we're out of lockdown, of course, you can go and dig up fossils. Places like the Lyme Regis, Jurassic Coast, up in Yorkshire, Scotland, even places here in Norfolk, there's Hunstanton and West Runton, which are full of fantastic fossils that you can go walk down along the beach and find out your own fossils. Dig them up, find them on the beach and explore. So that's the most important thing you can start doing now and learn as much as you can. Read books, ask questions. Don't just believe something because somebody tells you, actually ask questions about it. Begin to say, well, okay, you say this, how do you know that? Ah, you'll open up a whole new branch of science to you, a whole new world of knowledge when you begin to question things and actually find out why something is what it is. That is the true mark of a scientist, asking questions and learning more about the world around you. And then, of course, when you get older, you can potentially go on to do things like degrees in paleontology and geology, find out about how these things work, find out about techniques so you can actually go out and dig up your own dinosaurs eventually. Well, thank you very much for listening and watching, and thank you very much, Raw Dinosaur Adventure, for asking me to do this in the first place. It's been really fun. I hope you've enjoyed learning more about dinosaurs and learning about the life of a paleontologist and some of the work they do behind the scenes. Now, even though we've been here in lockdown, even though I had to grab all the fossils into a rucksack and run home with them, we've still got plenty to do. We've still got... Well, we've got all these hundreds of thousands of tiny little bits of bone that we need to glue back together and continue to construct. So I'm going to go on with that. But thank you very much for watching. Goodbye, God bless, and we'll see you very soon.